Hey everyone, it's Derek here with Moist Sauce Productions, and today we are doing breaks. And I did this last year, the front pads and the rear pads, but today we are doing rotors and pads. So here we have the Hawk HPS track pads, or HPS Plus, I believe, and we have the front HPS Plus and the rear HPS Plus, as well as rotors. So for the rear, this is a solid rotor. And this is a ventilated rotor. And this is for the front, obviously. So this is all for my 2013 Ford Focus ST. And all of this, so front rotors, two, rear rotors, two, and pads, both front and back, all cost around $550. So it's not cheap. And these weren't the cheapest ones. Uh, these are from Tire Rack and not sponsored. And I didn't get a deal, special deal or anything like that. It was just, uh, yeah, it's just what I had to pay for it. So, yeah, uh, let's get started with the install and we'll obviously have follow-up videos for just what has happened, like the performance of them. And one of the main things that I wanted out of this was, first off, it's, it's a 2013 and it's now 2018, so it's been five years uh, since I've, our, you know, these are the OEM rotors, so uh, not the OEM brake pads obviously I had the HPS uh, street pads on it last year and those were great for street and mild track days but I think if you have a 20 minute session that's probably your limit and you can probably do only one season with them and it probably makes sense to change them every season but uh, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what the when everybody's supposed to change. I think it's just based on your vehicle. So I have these rotors that I will be placing on and I haven't done this before. So I've seen a few YouTube videos and yeah, we're just gonna roll with it. Uh, it doesn't seem that complicated. I think the most difficult thing will be getting these rotors that are currently on the car off. And in which case I'll need a hammer to actually hammer it off. That's what I'm thinking since I've had a few track days and I'm sure it's stuck on there pretty good. So we'll see how long this takes. I'm hoping that it won't take more than a few hours, but we will see. I've, I've spent longer on these sorts of things. And I also have, obviously I have the tools to get all of this stuff out and I'll list them here. All the tools that you need for this install. And yeah, let's get started. Oh, it's also really hot in the garage, so if I end up looking super sweaty or like I'm just dr drenched in sweat or I look terribly miserable, it's because it's like 90, 90 degrees outside and it just rained a little, so it's cooling off a little bit, but it, this probably is also like super mosquito infested too. First things first, jack, jack the car up. Well, first you want to loosen up the nuts uh, because once the tires in the air, you won't be able to you won't be able to tighten or loosen them because the wheel will just spin. So loosen up the lug nuts and then jack the car up. And we're probably just gonna do this one wheel at a time. So we're doing this old school and very slowly. Otherwise, I know I can do this a lot faster. So the wheel's off, and we want to take off this caliper. So the first thing I think we're gonna start with is there are two caps on the back here, which I referred to in the last video. We have to remove this bracket. So just get a flat head to remove this and then pry it out. How is this so difficult? I knew it was... Jesus. Alright, I got it out, but 
That was way too difficult. There we go. And you don't want to leave this hanging, so let's take a look at these pads. Burnt to a crisp. Not nearly as bad as with the stock ones, but they're pretty banged up. Let's somewhere around here. Don't want to leave this hanging by that. So here are the brake pads on the fronts. Uh, not too low, but they're fairly low. Uh, the wear seems fairly even, so except right here on the edge. But other than that, it looks pretty decent here. It looks pretty fried, like I said, but you know, that's what happens when you do track days with this thing. If you didn't do track days, it probably would not look like this. But yeah, pads actually look, I mean, not completely worn down, but they're pretty worn down, so yeah. Alright, so next thing are these bolts back here to get the rest of this caliper piece off. And then we can... This is a thing that I haven't done before, so... <clears throat> so right here we have these two bolts. Um, hell, let's see if we even have a socket big enough for this thing. And this would be really great for... Okay, so I do have one big enough. This is a 19, so let's... There we go. Loosen them. So a 19 will work, but I think an 18 is where you're looking at. Alright. Piece of cake. As long as you turn the wheel, you'll have enough clearance, so. Alright, so this was the one of the parts that I wasn't too sure about, which seems to be okay. Not too bad. So. Let's see if the rotor part is difficult, because that's one thing that I've heard can be very, very difficult. There we go. Huzzah! This does not feel as heavy as that other one, so... Um, how can I show you this? This doesn't look that worn, so I feel like you can still use this, but... I guess we'll change this out since we have the parts. All right, so one of the things I wanted to check out was weights. So uh, this is the new one. Uh, we'll weigh them. We'll see what's up. <laughs> kind of feels the same, but we'll check. All right, so we got the official scale here, the Taylor scale from Caroline's grandma. So, let's weigh ourselves again. I have my phone and my keys, so I'm 145 and a half right there. So let's bring this baby on. So, I confirmed that before, that these new rotors are 19 pounds. So, let's see how much these are. Ooh. 145, there we go. Alright, now time to re-put stuff on. Caliper brackets, just repeat all the steps that you just did. Okay, so let's move on to um, piston. So, what happens when what happens when you actually uh, put on new pods? You actually have to compress the piston a bit. So, because the new pods that you have are going to be bigger, or they're going to have more pads. So, obviously, this compared to the old pad. So 
these right here, there's about maybe a few centimeters. Let's go with our piston compressor. And you can rent these from AutoZone, or not AutoZone, but I rented this from O'Reilly's. And basically all it is, is set right here. And that comes with all these different shapes and sizes based on your specific piston. Use the back side of this brake pad here and push this up against the piston so that it compresses a bit so I can fit the new um, brake pads in there. All right, put this through here. And you can do this one of two ways, I think. Um, you can actually get a wrench on here and twist it that way, or you can use your hands, which obviously with your hand, it's gonna be a lot more difficult, but uh, I don't think you need too much pressure on this thing to get it down, so. All right, let's see here. This bad boy right in between here. And then this will go here. Okay, so we need to give it a little more room to breathe. Stay. Stay, doggy, stay. So, I need to back this up a little bit. I'll just back it up a lot just to, uh, Really? A phone call at this time? Come on. You know? Anyways, back to it. Let's get this thing done. Alright, pads are securely in. One of the pads, uh, the one with this thing on the side, has to go into the actual piston section, so just make sure you shove that baby in. And yeah, the other side, uh, if you compress the piston like you should, would be nice and easy to put in. So just make sure you do that so that this whole process is a bit smoother. This is still fairly loose and this will get tightened down once that wheel gets uh, lug nut in there. So shouldn't have any issues with that once it gets tighter. Um, but other than that, this is pretty much done. Um, the one, the one really big pain in the ass. So uh, I'm gonna do this in the same method that I did before and then put this bracket on the last portion of it. But I'm having this weird sensation in my, in my, I have this weird suspicion that it's gonna be quite difficult to do this because it was quite difficult to even get it off of it. So if it's difficult to get it off of it, it's probably going to be difficult to get it on it. So let's put these uh, these pins that have the 7 mils back on, and then we'll move to the bracket, which is the biggest pain in my ass. Alright, just to give you a close-up look at what we're doing here. Alright, you see that? That's where that's going in, and up here is where that screw is going in. Right. Here's where I'm twisting, and this is where that pin is getting tighter. So, that's where that is. Let's see if we can get this thing in here without too much issue. There we go. That was much easier than getting it on. There we go. Even that out. There we go. That's first thing done. Oh, I gotta put that cap back on too. Alright, so bringing you back here, we're gonna take the caps off. There's a pin back here as well. And this one was kind of difficult to get out as well, so uh, we'll give you a close-up of that and show you what's going on with those as well. Oh, that one was like popped out already, that's no good. Just be aware, when you're tightening things, this dust shield is extra, extra sharp. So just be aware of that. Um, either wear long sleeves or wear leather. <laughs> okay. 
This first one should be okay. There we go. Not too bad, but as you as you saw, like it sort of jerks really quick. This one looks like I'll have to use this bendy thing because it looks like I really have no room because the uh, the sway bar is actually in the way and the end leg as well is in the way, which is so annoying. But we'll see if this bendy thing works. I think it still won't be too long. Um, I think what we might end up using is one of the uh, Allen keys to get this one. But that's going to be a pain in the butt too, so let's see. We can fumble around with this. I think the pizza guy is here. Yeah, yeah, feel free to go up there and uh, okay. she'll pay you upstairs. There we go. Alright, ingenuity. The more tools, the better. Alright, so we are back and. <laughs> more fireworks. Once again, we get the 4th of July. Uh, and the 4th of July is on a Wednesday. So, that's the reason. So,. First, so we got these two these two bolts in the back here off. So the next thing we want to do is get this bracket off. Then we'll be able to wiggle this off. We'll probably need to put a what you call it a flathead screwdriver here to uh, get the piston off of the rotor, and that we can pull this off. And then this last portion of here. There's two bolts in the back that will be need, needed to be taken off, and then we can start hammering this thing to get this off. Take a look at these pads. Look pretty banged up, but like I said before, these obviously got hot. These are these are pretty fried compared to these puppies. You know, these are definitely fr fried compared to it. So, yeah. Let's continue onwards. There are two bolts back here that I need to get the rest of this caliper off, and then we'll move on to the uh, the rotor and hammering and. I might need to move this up here, uh, and then we got access to the bolts, and these seem like they're smaller bolts, so let's go check out what size they are. Alright, so it looks like the closest thing that I have that fits this is a, is a 13, so let's see what we can do back here. Breaker bar for a safe measure, that way I don't hurt myself. and. That way, if I can fit it, why the heck not? Not make it harder on myself than it needs to be. There we go. Alright. Should be good to go. Huzzah! I love it when you have the right tools. Makes everything so much easier. Huzzah! All right. So I finally got that off and it took forever and I'm basically tired. It's basically tired. I'm, it's all, almost 11, it's just about 11. Siri, hey Siri, what time is it? Hey Siri, what time is it? It's 10.59. 10.59, so I'm halfway 
basically halfway. I still have to put the rest of this on. Um, so just a quick thing here. Um, I, yeah, I was just hammering this thing out with a hammer. Uh, I got penetrating. Uh, I got WD-40 on the back here. Eventually it came off. Uh, here is an interesting story. Um, I used pliers and turned it clockwise. And basically you have to press while you're pushing it in there. And then once it gets to a point where it stops, I was using the uh, piston. Uh, it's basically like a C-clamp, but it puts two holes or two things into the holes here. And then you're able to, you should put pressure on it and push at the same time so you can get the piston in. So yeah, let's put this thing together and we will finish up this video. <laughs> This is something that should, if you have all the right tools, it should take you about maybe an hour and a half total for all the wheels. Um, took me a little bit longer because this is the first time doing this. This type of changing the rotors is the first time that I'm doing this. So, um, But other than that, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video.